In this video, we're going to take a look at how to quickly configure a survey for Survey123 using the Survey123 Connect. Here we have the Survey123 Connect template that sets all the settings and parameters for our survey. We have a type column that lets us set the type of field that is exposed in the survey, the name field that lets us set the name of the database field, uh, the label or the alias of the field that we want to have show up in the survey. We can set a hint for letting surveyors know what type of information to collect in that field, any constraints on that particular field, whether it can be only between a certain number value or not, uh, whether or not we want that field to be required, a required message, we can even modify the appearance of how that field will look within the survey. We can set a default value for that particular field. We can even set uh, relevant or constraint values. So this allows us to go in and say a particular field will only show up or provide certain information if a user answers a question a certain way before that field. And we'll get into some more details and show an example of this uh, within the actual survey. We can have a field automatically calculate certain information based off of another field. And we have some additional settings in here uh, that we can fill out. Again, all of this is already based off of the template that Survey123 Connect offers. Down here, we have a few tabs. The first one is our survey tab. So this is where we fill out the majority of our uh, survey information. We also have a choices tab. So if we were to set up a multiple choice uh, question, this is the tab where we can go in and choose and designate the type of answers that would be presented in that list. We also have a settings tab where we can go in and overwrite some of the settings of the survey. And here we have our cheat sheet, which is our types tab, which gives us information on the types of fields that we can add in, what those fields mean, uh, the different types of appearances we can designate, uh, as well as some of the calculation uh, parameters and operators that you can enter in to calculate uh, fields automatically, HTML formatting, essentially any of the settings or enhancements or smart form settings that you can build into the survey are listed in here uh, for guidance. So this particular survey or template has already been filled out for a damage assessment survey. So once we have configured our spreadsheet, we can then take this, drag it into Survey123 Connect, and have it automatically generate our survey. So let's minimize the spreadsheet, take our damage assessment, drag it in here into Survey123 Connect, drag it onto our new survey, and it will import this Excel form and automatically build our damage assessment. So here we see what that survey looks like once it's been configured within survey one, two, three. So once we have it built, we can then open up the spreadsheet and modify it. So if we minimize this, we can then take a look at our damage assessment survey and some of the fields that are already within our survey. For example, we can look at uh, our report type field, and this is a select one out of the list or select another option. We set up our name for the database type as well as the label, which we can see here the report type. Now, since this was a select one from a list, if I go to our choices tab, we'll be able to see here at the top our report type list name and the two options here that uh, we can see in our uh, configured survey on the right-hand side. Now, if we go back to the survey, 
Uh, let's take a look at some of the smart form settings that utilize the relevant field setting. So within this survey, we want to give the user the option to select whether it's a damaged asset or a hazard and then bring up additional questions based off of that answer. So we can see here that we have a hazard type that when we go to our relevant field, what we are doing with this particular piece of code is saying when they report a hazard for the report type, we want to show this field. And we want this field to be a drop down of different hazard types. So if I select hazard in our survey on the right hand side, we'll notice that the hazard type field shows up and I have a drop down of different hazard types. Now if we go down to our asset condition, we've set this up in a similar way where we want a list of assets to pop up based off a user's answer of a damaged asset. So if we select damaged asset, we get a list of different asset types. Now if I want to go back and modify the survey, add an additional field, it's really easy to do so. So let's go in and add one additional field to our survey. For this, we want to add a text field for comments within the survey. So this will be a comments field, and then we'll add a label of comments. Now once I've added my additional text field here, we can save the survey within our spreadsheet. And as soon as we save the spreadsheet, we'll notice on the right hand side that our survey has been updated according to those changes. And here is my new comments field. Now, once I have configured the survey as I'd like, I can go in, I can view what the schema is going to be of our feature service or geodatabase that will be published up when we publish up the survey and we can modify some of the settings, add a thumbnail, choose a default map for our geo point that will be collected with each survey and uh, modify some additional settings. And then finally, we can then publish this up, which will ask us to sign in to our web portal and then share this survey into our web GIS. So this was a high level overview of Survey123 Connect and how you can quickly configure a damage assessment survey uh, within Survey123.